G'day guys, it is Ben here from Hunt the Night. Now, what we are going to do today is the importance of base magnification part two. Now, if you haven't seen the importance of base magnification on my YouTube channel, um, watch it. It doesn't matter if you watch it now or if you watch it later. Um, it's just an important one to watch, but it, I guess if you watch it later, it'll give you a little bit more of an idea of what's going on in that video. Um, in that video, we show a comparison between uh, different scopes and, and sensors. But I get, you know, a lot of my conversations are around when I fit people for, for scopes are, you know, what do you shoot and how far do you shoot it? And if they aren't the first questions that comes out of someone's mouth when you're trying to buy a scope for them, uh, find someone that does. Because if you don't understand this stuff and if you don't try and match your base magnification to your shooting, you're going to compromise the, the quality of your scope. Um, and I'm gonna show you why. So in today's scopes, we have generally speaking a 640 uh, by 480 or a 384 by 288. We get some lower end sensors in that as well, but that's the sensor size, okay? Obviously, you know, physically it's a lot smaller than this, but for today's representation, uh, that's gonna work. And then we've got the screen size on the back. And typically speaking, the screens are all 0.39 of an inch, a little bit smaller than those, you know, 100 and, inch TVs you get these days, but anyway, 0.39 of an inch, um, and they're high resolution, they're, they're, they're 1024 um, high definition, uh, typically OLED or AMOLED screens. Uh, so you still see some LCOS screens, but it doesn't matter, the pixel density is kind of the same, and, and that's kind of what we're talking about. And physically speaking, that is actually about the size of the screen in the back of your device. Um, and then you've got you know your ocular lens on the back, which this projects onto, and, then, and that's how you see, you know, what appears to be a bigger picture. So when you are running your scope in base magnification, all of this information here is on this screen, okay? All of this 640 by 480 is still stretched because it's a 1024 screen um, onto, this, onto this screen here, but it's in its native resolution, it's going to look the best. When you digitally zoom and people say, you halve the quality of the image, it is actually a little bit different to that. So if we go from one magnification to two magnification, or in the case of a, you know, a 50 mil focal length, we go from two magnification to four magnification, in terms of just the actual digital optics, this is what happens. The software goes, okay, I've got to now take this section here, and whatever I'm viewing, and this section may come out of the middle, but whatever that part of the scene is, this no longer appears on the screen. And this is now 320 by 240, okay? And this information here is now stretched across this same high definition screen. So you've got a lot less information going across the same screen. So all of this, you get pixel scrubbing and filling and so on into this screen and cloning to help it make it, um, you know, kind of look kind of reasonable, but that's where your image degradation starts from. So it's actually kind of like, you know, a quarter of the sensor, not the whole, not the whole thing, but that's what it does. And then when you zoom again, it's going to take this section here and this is no longer gonna be part of the picture, and just this part is going to be stretched across the whole screen. And that's why the picture starts to get worse and worse. So if you want to shoot small game at longer distance, you want to start with something that's got more magnification because natively it's going to look better. You know, if this is a 384 sensor, a 384 by 288 and call it this, and that's in four base magnification, that's going to look better than this at um, in, in native base magnification. And the reason why is because it doesn't have all that digital in this, you know, in terms of trying to fill this screen with, with pixels that it's no longer seeing. Yes, you're going to get a narrower field of view, but field of view shouldn't be your primary concern in your scope. Field of view should be your primary concern in your spotter. And if you don't have a thermal spotter, then technically I don't really think you should really have a thermal scope personally. I think you should always start with a spotter first. My idea is you get the widest field of view and the biggest sensor in your spotter, and then you get the, the sensor that's going to work best for you and the field of view and base magnification that's going to work best for you in the scope. Um, if I'm shooting big game at shorter distances, again, I'm taking the biggest field of view and the lowest base magnification that I can. So for me, base magnification is the key because 
image quality depends on your zoom. And if you start at a higher base magnification, especially on small game, and I, I hammer on us about small game a lot because we support a lot of people that are shooting wild dogs and foxes, and they're small and they're further away. So in, in those senses, you know, smaller sensors with more magnification um, are better. And from a from a detection and identification recognition range, if, if you take two scopes that are identical, so for instance, if you take a Trail 2 XP50 and a Trail 2 XQ50, their, their identification detection ranges are identical, but the image quality at on small game at longer distance is going to be better on the XQ50 than it is the XP50, just because it's got that extra base magnification. Anyway, guys, um, just wanted to throw that in there. Uh, it's it's also actually the only reason why this screen and stretching the screen, it's the only reason why in base magnification, a 640 sensor looks a little bit better than a 384 sensor because the 640 just fills these pixels a bit more. Um, but that's the, you know, if, if it was just a raw sensor feed, it would look identical. Um, anyway, we explained that in a different video. So there it is, guys. I just wanted to delve a little bit more into that. I hope you find this useful. Uh, give me a like, give me a comment, give me a share, and tag a vegan. See you on the next one.